concerning the question of the beyond. Two had a large number of adherents, though these teachings had nothing in common. And it was precisely these two teachings which began to pass from generation to generation, and to confuse their being sane mentation, which had already been confused enough without them. Although in the course of their transmission from generation to generation, the details of both these teachings underwent change, nevertheless the fundamental ideas in them remained unchanged and have even reached down to contemporary times. One of these two teachings, which then had many adherents in Babylon, was just the dualistic, and the other the atheistic. So that in one of them it was proved that in beings there is the soul, and in the other, quite the opposite, namely that they have nothing of the kind. In the dualist or idealist teaching, it was said that within the coarse body of the being man, there is a fine and invisible body which is just the soul. This fine body of man is immortal, that is to say, it is never destroyed. This fine body or soul, it was said further, must make a corresponding payment for every action of the physical body, whether voluntary or involuntary, and every man already at birth consists of these two bodies, namely the physical body and the soul. Further, it was said that as soon as a man is born, two invisible spirits immediately perch upon his shoulders. On his right shoulder sits a spirit of good, called an angel, and on his left a second spirit, a spirit of evil, called a devil. From the very first day, these spirits, the spirit of good and the spirit of evil, record in their notebooks all the manifestations of the man. The spirit sitting on his right shoulder recording all those called his good manifestations or good deeds. And the spirit sitting on his left shoulder, the evil. Among the duties of these two spirits, is that of suggesting to and compelling a man to do more of those manifestations which are in their respective domains. The spirit on the right constantly strives to make the man refrain from doing those actions which are in the domain of the opposite spirit, and perforce more of those in his own domain. And the spirit on the left does the same, but vice versa. In this strange teaching, it was further said that these two spirit rivals are always combating each other, and that each strives with might and main that the man should do more of those actions which are in his domain. When the man dies, these spirits leave his physical body on the earth and take his soul to God, who exists somewhere up in heaven. There up in heaven, this God sits surrounded by his devoted archangels and angels and suspended in front of him is a pair of scales. On each side of the scales, spirits stand on duty. On the right stand the spirits who are called servants of paradise, and these are the angels. And on the left stand the servants of hell and these are the devils. The spirits which have sat on the man's shoulder all his life bring his soul after death to God, and God then takes from their hands the notebooks in which the notes have been recorded of all the man's actions, and he places them on the pans of the scales. On the right pan he puts the notebook of the angel, and on the left pan the notebook of the devil. And according to the pan which falls, God commands the spirits on duty standing on the given side to take this soul into their charge. In the charge of the spirits standing on duty on the right is just that place called paradise. 
It is a place of indescribable beauty and splendiferousness. In that paradise are magnificent fruits in abundance and endless quantities of fragrant flowers and enchanting sounds of cherubic songs and seraphic music constantly echo in the air. And many other beings were also enumerated whose outer reactions according to the perceptions and cognitions abnormally inherent in the three-brained beings of that strange planet are likely to evoke in them, as they say, great satisfaction. That is to say, the satisfaction of those needs formed in their common presences, which are criminal for three-centered beings to possess, and the totality of which have driven out from their presences everything without exception that was put into them by our common father, and which it is imperative for every three-brained being to possess. In charge of the spirits standing on duty on the left of the scales, who, according to this Babylonian teaching, are the devils, there is what is called hell. Concerning hell, it was said that it is a place without vegetation, always unimaginably hot and without a single drop of water. In that hell sounds constantly echo of fearful cacophony and infuriated offense abuse. Everywhere there are instruments of every conceivable torture from the rack and the wheel to instruments for lacerating bodies and mechanically rubbing them with salt and so on of the same kind. In the Babylonian idealistic teaching, it was minutely explained that in order that his soul should enter this paradise, the man must constantly strive while on earth to provide more material for the notebook of the spirit angels sitting on his right shoulder. Otherwise, there would be more material for the records of the spirit sitting on the left shoulder, in which case such a man's soul would inevitably go to the most awful hell. Here Hussein could not restrain himself, and suddenly interrupted with the following words. And which of their manifestations do they consider good and which bad? Beelzebub looked at his grandson with a strange look and shaking his head said as follows. Concerning this, which being manifestation are there on your planet considered good and which bad? Two independent understandings, having nothing in common with each other, have existed from the most ancient times up to the present period, having passed from generation to generation. The first of these understandings exists there and passes from one generation to another among such three-brained beings there as were those members of the society Akaldan on the continent Atlantis. And such as those who although of another kind, several centuries later after the Transalpalnian perturbation, acquired almost the same in the foundations of their common presences and who were called initiates. The first of these understandings exists there under the following formulation. Every action of man is good in the objective sense if it is done according to his conscience, and every action is bad if from it he later experiences remorse. And the second understanding arose there soon after the wise invention of the great king Canuzion, which invention passing from generation to generation through ordinary beings there gradually spread over almost the whole planet under the name of morality. Here it will be very interesting to notice a particularity of this morality which was grafted upon it at the very 